can we just play Detroit every game? Welcome to From Center Ice. My name is Courtney. The Blackhawks won, so let's talk about it. The only lineup changes that we saw for the second game against Detroit was Carl Soderberg making his Blackhawks debut and he came in for Lucas Walmark. If you've been following along, I've been a pretty big fan of Lucas Walmark for the beginning of the season so far, so I was a little bummed to see him come out of the lineup, but with another center coming in, I don't really know who else would have come out, so it did just make sense. It was good to see him finally get his visa issues sorted out, be able to come to Chicago and get a game in. He played a lot of minutes on the penalty kill as well, so if he can keep doing that moving forward, that would be great. Of course, Detroit did score two power play goals, but they were really good chances and directed right in front of the net. So what are you gonna do? It's not his fault. With that being the only lineup change, that means Kevin Lonkinen was back in net. He only allowed those two goals on the power play. Otherwise, he was fantastic once again. Being an Ice Hog season ticket holder, I am a big fan of Kevin Lonkinen, so it is good to see him performing this well at the NHL level. It seems like the Blackhawks may have their starting goaltender. But the season is still early, we will just have to see. Let's jump into the three questions I had for game number six, the second game against Detroit. Question number one. Will the Hawks defense build off of their strong play? I would say so. Five on five, they looked pretty good. Even on the penalty kill, they didn't look bad. The two goals that Detroit got were just really good shots or a tip in front of the net. There were times during this game where the Blackhawks had trouble clearing the puck out of the zone. That's kind of par for the course for this team. Of course, you would like to see that cleaned up, but... It is what it is. I will take them having issues clearing the puck, but only giving up two goals, rather than giving up the five that they were before. Duncan Keith got some big shot blocks this game. That was very good to see. Calvin DeHaan had a shot block. Connor Murphy scored a goal. We got another goal from the blue line this game. Last game, it was Calvin DeHaan. This game, Connor Murphy. You love to see it. Question number two. Can the Blackhawks handle getting scored on? So Detroit's first power play goal came at the beginning of the second period, so it's a little hard to say. Once they got that goal, they did get some momentum. The Blackhawks were pinned in their own zone a little bit. So it's hard to say if it was because they got scored on or if Detroit made some adjustments during the intermission. Thankfully, the Hawks regained their footing and took back control of the game without letting up another goal immediately after that first one. Detroit's second and final goal was in the third period, so clearly they didn't implode too badly in the second and they didn't throw away the game at the end of the third. I will take that as them improving. We'll see what happens against Nashville. Question number three. Will another new player get a first? Yes! Pia Suter finally got his first NHL goal, and not only did he get his first NHL goal, he got his first NHL hat trick. It was looking like maybe he would have to get that third goal on an empty netter. That's why I wasn't too upset when Detroit scored their second goal, but he didn't even need the empty net. He came down the left side. He had Patrick Kane on the right. They had a two-on-one. It looked like maybe he was thinking about the pass, thought better of it, took the shot, and just sniped it over Jonathan Bernier for the goal. A beautiful third goal to round out that hat trick. Matthias Janmark got his first goal against a goaltender. He got his first goal with the Blackhawks last game, but it was the shorthanded empty net goal, so that was nice to see. Maybe they can keep this rolling, and in the next game, another new guy will get some firsts. We shall see. The second game against Detroit was a lot of fun to watch. It was nice and early, 11 11.30 a.m. local time. You gotta love a nice early game to go with some morning coffee. The Blackhawks came out of the gate flying, they put up some goals, they kept Detroit mostly off of the score sheet, and they just looked all around solid. Of course, Detroit is not a very good team. We'll have to see how this translates against a better opponent. Next up, they have Nashville down in Nashville, so they are leaving the United Center once again after being back for only two games and going down to Tennessee. So let's jump over to my three questions for this first game against the Nashville Predators. Question one, can the Blackhawks keep up this strong play against a better opponent in Nashville? Kind of what I was just saying in the intro there, Detroit is not a very good team. They were looking better to start the season, but going into this two game series with Detroit, the Hawks and the Red Wings had scored the same amount of goals. Detroit was just doing a way better job of keeping the puck out of the net. Of course, the Hawks 
Hawks were giving up five goals a game, so once they cut down on that, they looked like a much better team. Granted, they were not facing the firepower of the Tampa Bay Lightning or the Florida Panthers, so we'll have to see what happens once they go up against the Preds. I hope the defense can also continue to look good, and hopefully Kevin Lonkinen has some more good games. Although, I believe the games against Nashville are a back-to-back, -back, so we might see one of our other goaltenders. Not sure who that would be at this point. I believe Subban has been the one backing up Kevin, so maybe Subban gets that second game. He has only played one game so far, so that would just make sense. Question two! Is the defensive pairing of Ian Mitchell and Adam Boquist a thing we might see for a full game? I'm gonna go ahead and say probably not, but during the last minute of this game against Detroit, they were both out there at the same time, and I was really happy to see that. Both of those guys are our young rookie defenders. Maybe Boquist isn't so much of a rookie anymore since he played in the NHL last season, but if these guys continue to develop and hit their ceilings, they could be our number one defensive pairing for a while. So coming off of two very good games, I would like to see them get a full game of being paired up together. It's probably not going to happen since they are young, and Jeremy Colleton has been pairing those guys up with some more veteran defenders, but it's something that I would like to see. I think I called for it a couple games ago, so maybe the Hawks just have to watch these videos. Question three, will the second power play unit see more ice time? I know maybe that's kind of a weird thing to bring up since the power play has been clicking. They've scored a power play goal in all six of their games so far, which is something that has not been done in a very long time for the Hawks. One of those games, Kubelik did score two of the power play goals, so the second unit was on for that one. But other than that, we've mostly just been seeing the first unit with Patrick Kane out there. Of course, who could argue about having Patrick Kane out on the ice on the power play, but Kubelik does need to get some more shots as well. And with that lethal one-timer, you just want to see more of it. You know he's gonna score off of some of those shots, and they are are just very beautiful to watch. So maybe that's just a stylistic thing and a personal preference of what I would like to see, but that unit is very effective. Kubalik is out there, Philip Kurashev is out there, Matthias Janmark has been on that unit, and in this game against Detroit, he was setting up guys for shots in front of the net multiple times throughout this game. He set up Ryan Carpenter for a wide open net. Unfortunately, the puck was bouncing all around and he just shot it right through the crease. Watching it live, you're like, how did he miss that? It was wide open. You see the replay, the puck is bouncing around. Of course, you still want him to bury that one. It sure would have been nice. It is what it is. The puck was bouncing a lot in this game. I don't know if the ice at the United Center wasn't really up to par or what was going on, but hopefully the ice in Nashville is better. And when they are able to come back to the United Center again, hopefully it's a little bit better than it was this morning. Those are my three questions for the game against Nashville. I am still just very happy about this two game series against Detroit. I had written in my preview that if they come away from this series still winless, 0-6, or I guess it would be 0-5-1 since they had the overtime loss. They should be embarrassed. Thankfully, they won both games, and pretty convincingly. They did get that fifth goal today. I was lamenting about that in the last video. They just couldn't get that fifth goal after giving up five for the first four games of the season. But they got the fifth one today, and they went a step above that and got a sixth one. It was just fun to watch. The goaltending was incredible. The defense was good. The the forwards were doing that job. They were setting up plays all over the ice. Everybody looked good down there in the offensive zone. There were some lapses in the defensive zone, of course. Like I said before, they had some trouble clearing it out of their zone. Hopefully they can work on that in this one day between games that they have here. Nashville has been better than both of these teams, the Wings and the Hawks so far, so they are going up against another tough opponent. I'm just hoping that this series against Detroit came at the right time. Those first four games against Tampa and Florida they did not look good, and that couldn't have felt good for the guys on the ice. So coming back home and dominating the Red Wings, hopefully they leave this series with a lot of confidence that they can take down to Nashville and have a better outing. They know that they can score goals now, they just have to get those chances to the net. They know that they can give up less than five goals. Hopefully that's something they continue going forward no matter which goaltender is in net. I do believe that Lonkinen will be the starter, at least for now. It seems like 
gets his crease to lose. I mean, you would love to see it get super competitive and make the coach's decision hard for who they're gonna put in net night tonight. That would mean that all three goaltenders are just winning games and stopping pucks like they are supposed to do. We didn't see that from the other two so far. Subban has only played one game, the first game of the season against the Tampa Bay Lightning. You cannot put that on him. None of those goals were his fault. Delia had a bit rougher two games, but if you've watched him play before in the NHL or maybe you've caught some games with the Ice Hogs, you know that he can be a fantastic goaltender. He just has to have that confidence. He is very chaotic. That doesn't change, but when he is on top of his game, that chaos works for him instead of against him. I'm sure we will get to see him in net again and I am sure that he will come out with a better performance. So for now, Lonkinen is the starter, Subban and Delia will still get their chances. Hopefully they can make a competition out of it. It would be a lot more fun for us fans to watch, that's for sure, because the Hawks would be winning more games or at least be in tighter games when they lose. All of that being said, the series against Detroit is over. It was a fun one to watch. Next up, we have Nashville. Kind of a rival for the Hawks. We've seen them enough in the playoffs. Of course, the last time we saw them in the playoffs, they swept us and the Hawks only scored three goals all series. That was a tough one. Oh, 2017. But now it is 2021. It is a brand new year. We basically have a brand new roster. Let's go down to Nashville take both of these games and show the Preds that they are not better than us. Going back to what I said last video about being a Chicago sports fan, you hope for the best, you expect the worst, you end up somewhere in between. So that's where we are until we see this first game against Nashville. Thank you all for tuning in. If you want more from Center Ice, the links to the social media pages are down in the description. You can also head on over to fromcenterice.com. Keep up with the latest podcast episodes. Keep up with all of the written pieces. I post previews before basically every game. I missed this one because it was quite early for me. And you can always hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of these videos. That would be cool too. So I will catch you all next game. Let's hope for the best against the Preds. And until then, bye guys. Thank you all for watching. Please hit that subscribe button to catch more From Center Ice content. If you could, hit the like button on this video. Maybe share it with a friend or two. And while you're here, check out the podcast playlist and catch up on some old episodes. We will catch you all next time. Bye!